Before we get to common misconceptions about love and relationships, just want to mention uh, I relaunched my circle, which is forums, chats, and uh, you could hang with me live once a week. I'm doing check-ins using Zoom, uh, accountability groups. There's also uh, love and sex groups, mindfulness groups, breath work. So come on in and check it out. Uh, just go to my Instagram at the Angry Therapist and tap my bio link and I will see you in my circle. Okay, here are some common misconceptions about love and relationships. Number one, Love conquers all. I know we've heard this before. Um, I used to think this was romantic. I believed in this, you know. Uh, you just have to love hard enough, and that is going to push you through. It's going to get people to change. When in doubt, just love harder. And, of course, uh, that is not true. I think love can actually destroy us. I mean, not to be a Debbie the Downer, but um, – <laughs> instead of love saving us, I think love can destroy us. You know, uh, we get into healthy relationships. I mean, unhealthy relationships um, because of love. We do things that go against our truth. We do things, we start compromising self because of love. I think there's more cases of us being destroyed by love than us being saved by love. And you know what? Both can happen. Like you could actually get destroyed by love, assuming that love is unhealthy, and then go on your journey, find healthy love, and then I think that love can, of course, save you. So um, both can happen, but I do think, or maybe because I'm a therapist, so of course I'm getting people who have been destroyed by love, not really saved by love. Um, Maybe that's why it feels like that to me. But yeah, I feel like it's not that love conquers all. Love doesn't give you the vine to pull you out of the quicksand. Although I know it could. I think for most of us, love is what pushes us into the quicksand. Okay. Uh, this idea of soulmates. This is another huge misconception. The idea that there's only one perfect person for you, uh, it can be misleading. It can uh, put pressure on you. It could make you believe that there's someone else. So it could relieve you of work that needs to be done. It can be, you know, an escape hatch. Um, there are billions of people on this planet. I love the idea or the definition that your soulmate is a person that you're choosing to love today, you know? That is your soulmate. I think if we believe in this whole fairy tale of soulmates and the one, and uh, we get into a relationship where it becomes hard, and all relationships do, they all become hard. They're supposed to be hard. It's it's uh, it's like that whole thing where you know um, that saying that. Um, I'm paraphrasing, but basically a pearl becomes a pearl because of the friction, right? Because of the grind. I think relationships um, can become pearls, can be gems, right? But only if you go through the grind, only if two people have looked inward and um, taken ownership and two people have broken old patterns and – by doing all of that, I've uh, built a relationship that uh, has legs, that's sustainable, you know? Um, and, and then I think the idea of soulmates, I think, holds more true then, you know, like it, once you've done the work, because it, I, I like the idea that soulmates are earned. I, I think that's what it is. I, I think that's why I have a problem with soulmates is like it's given. Oh, someone's your soulmate or they're not uh, based on what? A feeling based on connection. Well, I've I could fall in love with someone just going to the coffee shop if I allow myself to. You know, people are beautiful and interesting, and we are all curious, right? So, uh, the idea of a soulmate based on some kind of connection or spiritual connection, I don't know. I don't know. I I, I think the idea of earning your soulmate because your soulmate is a person who is in front of you. Um, 
I think that's more interesting. I think that's more realistic. I think that is, um, I think it's better for the world, that definition. The fact that you have to earn your soulmate. They don't just fall on our lap. We choose who we want to love and invest in. And then um, working hard on the relationship gives you a soulmate. So you earn your soulmate. All right, next misconception about love that lo is that love should always feel passionate. And I used to believe this in my 20s. I based love and how powerful or healthy love is based on the attraction or based on, you know, the passion, the feeling. And I thought that if the passion wasn't there, then it wasn't meant to be. Um, and it's not true. I mean, yeah, there's passion in the beginning. And I think passion, passion fluctuates, you know, I think chemistry fluctuates. I think yet you have to work on your relationship um, to create a space for passion to breathe, right? So yes, there, get, there can be passion early on, but it's not a constant. It's not a light switch. It's something that um, there's a, a, a flames that need to be fanned, right? And I think a passionate relationship requires a safe space. It requires um, lots of tools and communication and listening. It is uh, nurtured. It's not something that is just given because um, someone has pretty eyes or because you guys have a lot in common or because the sex is good. If you feel, and here's another, uh, I think, fact about love. If you feel a lot of passion early on, the kind of passion that knocks your socks off, that knocks your knee-high socks off, then I think that that passion can be coming from an unhealthy place. I think that passion can be, um, and this is what people call the lightning in the bottle, I think that passion can be uh, dysfunction. And I think we mistake that in our 20s and think that we're in love with, you know, our person and it's the most crazy love and I'm just head over heels when it's actually dysfunction. It's disguised as dysfunction because dysfunction dis dysfunction can um, feel very passionate, right? Okay, next, next uh, misconception about love. Happiness depends on finding a partner. This, uh, man, I think a lot of this is just a world that we live in, believing that if we don't have a partner, that if we are single, then we are defective or less than. So lots of programming in our society for us to believe this. But it's a misconception. It is not true. Now, of course, we most of us want to love someone. Want, we know there's... Uh, um, tremendous joy in doing life with someone, building a relationship. Um, I think we're meant to as humans, we're wired that way, but it, it doesn't mean that that's the only place where you will be happy. It doesn't mean that you can't be happy when you're single. While being in love in a loving relationship can contribute to happiness, it's essential to cultivate personal fulfillment and happiness independently. And I think that if you don't, then when you love someone and you're happy is tied to that person or relationship, you actually become powerless in your life. Because if that relationship goes down or if it, things aren't good, then your happiness is directly tied to that. So um, you have to have a foundation. That foundation is your own happiness, your own life, your own independence, your own freedom, your own friends your own passions, and you're bringing all that to the table to do life with someone, right? Your person that you're choosing to do life with isn't your everything. Okay, and the last misconception about love. Love means never having to say you're sorry. Apologies and forgiveness are crucial in any relationship. It's unrealistic to expect perfection. And acknowledging mistakes and working through them together strengthens the bond between partners. It's mind-blowing how many people just won't say the two words, I'm sorry. It's like we're easy to say I love you. We're very fast to say I love you. Um, but to admit that we're wrong, 
to actually say I'm sorry. It's rare, and, and a lot of a lot of couples that I that I um, have coached or treated in the room, I, I will say, okay, can you you can you are sorry? Can you say that to your partner? Can you look to your partner and say those words? And I get a lot of hesitation. I get a lot of defensiveness. I get yeah, but and it's so hard for us to just say that we're sorry. Love means, I think. Say, the ability to say you're sorry. I mean, if you can't say you're sorry, I don't know how you or can love someone, you know, because um, you're going to fight and fight, fights aren't always bad. Fights can be good in that they can produce a lot of relationship glue as long as they're healthy. So it's not about how many times we fight, it's about how we fight. And in order to fight in a healthy way, you have to take ownership and say that you're fucking sorry. So if you're sorry, say it, say it. You can't say I love you, but never say that you're sorry. Anyway, these are just a few misconceptions about love. I think also as we change our definitions of love changes, and uh, that's like the whole point is that love is this uh not this constant but this kind of living breathing thing and uh what we want from love what, and how we want to love how we want to receive love all of that changes as we go on this journey of exploring ourselves and as we grow you know what you wanted in high school as far as love and your definition of love i'm sure is very different than um what you want today and you know we could have the same taste we can enjoy the same things and we have certain types that we're trying to do of course but i'm talking about building a relationship i'm talking about love as in the daily practice of love and i know for myself as a 50 year old today um love is different i put weight on different things i've learned a lot about myself about love i've shattered a lot of misconceptions i know that love isn't easy I know that the way that I have loved and still continue to love are sometimes um, those ways are not healthy sometimes. And I know that love is greater than the parts. I, I really believe that love itself, this kind of um, living, breathing thing is meant to teach us things about ourselves. I think there's no greater power in this world than love. Um, love can also destroy us. We can die. <laughs> we have died uh, for love. Um, and we've also been saved by love. And so love is one of the most powerful forces, energies, uh, things on this planet. Um, and I think that us having a relationship with love, healthy or unhealthy, but just holding it and learning and growing from it is, um, it's our journey on this planet. It's a big part of, I think, while we're here, why we're here is it's uh, not just to build empires and, you know, machines that <laughs> rockets that take us to Mars. Or I, I, I think one of the reasons why we're on this planet is to learn how to be more loving beings in a, in a, in a honest way. And I think that that can take a lifetime. Thank you for listening. Be well.